This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Welcome, everybody, to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I am your host, Jordan Stiles. Yep. The name graphic is still wrong. And I am here to bring you uh, my hostile takeover of the Sorgatron Studios. Welcome. With my sidekick, oh, Michael Sorg. Hi, I'm here. I'm here. And Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to everybody. Uh, happy Flag Day. And uh, Mary Arbor Day. Although we have abs- zero decorations in the studio this year. Yeah, this does not feel festive I at all. I forgot it's, that it's December. Me too. Me too. Other than the snow here and there. But no, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. That is Joe Dabrowski. I'm Mike Sorg. We're in Pittsburgh. We're at Sorgatron Media Studios. Mm-hmm. And this is a special edition uh, for you guys over, uh, you know, give you something to listen to over the holiday break so we're not completely leaving you. Leaving you with just your thoughts and your family. You I would never leave you, no matter what, because no. I love you too much. No, you got something to listen to as we ponder the decade that was. I feel like I should have a song like the In the Year 2000. We don't have that in the budget, do we? We don't have that in the budget. and actually, I'm probably already going to get pulled off of YouTube because I did that. Uh, or at least shared revenue that I don't get. Uh, but anyways. <laughs> there goes that 14 cents. What is this? I want to hear uppercut from Joe, says Wheels. I don't know. What? I have no idea. The chat room is already confusing me. Is the chat uh, room drunk? The, is, the, is the chat room drunk? It might be. It's Thursday night. It's getting close to the holidays. Do they just want to hear me yell uppercut like at a Sunny Defarge match. Oh, that might be it. That might be it. It could be. I don't know. Or they're drunk. Or, or they're drunk. Or, Yes. But anyways, uh, we thought it'd be fun since uh, Joe happened to find himself in the studio tonight. I wandered in from the taco stand. He did. He did. They were playing some music. It 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 it, it got him interested, and then he ended up here. I, I got tired from table dancing. That's how Sam Adonis ends up here half the time. <laughs> I believe that. At any part of that. But anyways, but we decided, like, hey, let's look back at everybody's doing their, their end of the decade thing. I will have done a uh, end of the year thing by the week before this. And, you know, and kind of look at that. And uh, I, I guess, first of all, Joe, what are you doing a decade ago? A decade ago? Um, well, I mean, 10 years ago at this time was a pretty exciting point for me because I was um, getting ready to debut with Ring of Honor. Mm. Um, the beginning of 2010 was the start of my run there, and um, that was uh, an exciting time facilitated by Adam Pierce and Kerry Silken and Jimmy Jacobs and a few others. And um, fast forward a decade later, and as we're recording this, you know, we're less than 24 hours away from Ring of Honor Final Battle out in Baltimore, and I'll be there on hand doing maybe something. And uh, doing Future of Honor in Joppa on, on Saturday. Um, and at that point, you know, my home promotion was was IWC. Uh, and we were saying goodbye to Notorious Norm Connors. Oh, geez. Because that was his final show as a promoter. So mm-hmm. um, time of transition for me. Uh, I was doing, um, you know, PWO TV in Cleveland still. We were in the middle of the run. Um, Johnny Gargano was the face of our promotion and the top guy, and who knows what the hell happened to him since, but, um, that was a hell of a run. Um, then I was a part of a couple other smaller organizations. I think I was, I was in PWX at the time. I think I was doing CWE in Youngstown. Um. Oh, wow. They were still running. I think that had, yeah, that was... That was in its uh, 
final couple of years, I think. So I was on the grind, being a good brother, doing my thing. Um, so yeah, I think we had to have been spinning up doing um, the Montreal Theory by then, right? I think um, I think right around the start of 2010 is when I gave you the pitch. Mm-hmm. I think because I, I think our earliest interviews we started shooting um, Raven. Raven, and we shot after Night of Legends 2010. That's after right. Night of Legends was it 2010? I think so. Okay, maybe 2009. No, it was either 10 or 11. Definitely 10 then. Okay. Um, and we did Carino at mm-hmm. the, the ECW arena. Which was a two-day Ring of Honor taping for yes. HDNet. Yes. Back in that run. Uh, with uh, at, the late, great Mike Hogwood on at, play-by-play. Adam Pierce yelled at me. Adam Pierce yelled at me. So we yes. all something and I, I stood and I, and I was sitting beside Jim Cornette, who was yelling at a TV monitor. That sounds like Jimmy, yeah. Yes. I got a nice T-shirt of Jim Cornette over uh, off camera now, so it kind of comes full circle. Jim had an interesting decade. <laughs> How was Jim Cornette's decade? <laughs> uh, I love Jim. I don't care what anybody says. I don't agree with it with everything he necessarily says or does, but um, mm. he's always been great to me, and he's working with him. It was it was a highlight for me in this decade for sure. I got mm. a chance to. Share a mic with him in Ring of Honor, and then do another voiceover project with him. And you know, he's somebody I grew up with. So uh, he, he's still like looking back at those old, you know, what uh, um, Smoky Mountain wrestling, mm-hmm. and and even when he popped up on NWA Power this year, up until he wasn't, um, <laughs> it was still like kind of good to remember. He is good at this. Oh my you god! You know, there's a reason he's Jim Cornette. He's a natural. He's a natural talker. Mm-hmm. He's one of those guys, and you know we're we're kind of talking off air about people who, you know, can't help but just go over their time on talking. And 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 Corny's a guy that, you know, if, if you need him to go out there and talk for twelve minutes, he could, mm-hmm. and not stop to breathe. Mm-hmm. He could just do whatever was needed. Um, I I hate that he's so polarizing now, um, and I think you know if you're if you're talking about. Through the decade, you, you're looking at so many cultural changes, societal changes, technological changes, and um, Jim's still Jim, mm-hmm. for better or worse. I, I, I think it's interesting how he's, um, rough commentary aside, it's interesting how everybody um, kind of <laughs> precursors, like, hey, this really cool thing happens. By the way, Jim Cornette, here you go. We know you're going to hate it. Like, even I saw Mick Foley kind of pre-tagging him on things like that. <sighs> Yeah, and it's like, it's, don't poke the bear. Like, do we need more <laughs> of this? I, I, I think I think the, just the polarization of the generations of pro wrestling have been a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got a certain amount of old guys that'll come out and say, well, these young kids don't know how to work, and they're disrespectful, and they don't know what they're doing. And then you've got the young guys coming up and saying, well, these old guys are out of touch. They don't know what it takes to connect with an audience and – 2019 and um at the end of the day they're both wrong you know and they're both right to an extent too but you Mm -hmm. need that middle ground and you need the best of both worlds to truly get ahead i mean the guys of yesteryear um made more money than the average guy does now Mm -hmm. without a doubt and drew far bigger houses had far better longevity, could run a town every week and sell it out in some cases. Um, young guys are, are, are the progressive ones. They're the, the free thinkers. They're coming with the new ideas and concepts that can relate to, to you know, this generation. And But they need to know how to do things to get the most benefit out of everything they're doing. Mm-hmm. And, and the older guys need to take those concepts and, and – kind of put them through the ringer as far as how to best present it in 2019 because people don't view the business in the same way in 2019 that they did in 1989 or 79 or even 99. Um, if everybody listened to each other and worked together, God, the business would be in such a better place. But anytime I log on to Twitter, we're all arguing with each other or we're all offended by something <laughs> and it just, not not a lot gets accomplished. It you seems know? like a, a weekly basis because I think we're everybody's not used to like, 
an even playing field in wrestling companies like you say we're seeing on Wednesday night, right? Mm -hmm. So like I, I see like Marcus I saw this week, uh, and I feel like I see somebody doing this once a week when I start tuning into you know, wrestling Twitter around these shows. And it's like, hey, just a reminder, guys, it's okay to like different wrestling than everybody. Like, we need this reminder, which I guess we do because, I mean, it's like, you know, uh, back to uh, 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 Nintendo versus Sega. Everybody needs to kind of pick a side and defend yeah. their side, right? And I, I, don't, I don't mind fans um, having a preference. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's healthy. That's passion. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to go out there and tell me why this is your favorite show and why I should check it out. Mm -hmm. Um but the thing is, it's like anybody that hopes, like I, I, I hope Dynamite succeeds. Mm -hmm. I, I hope AEW um, wins the Wednesday Night War over NXT because we need variety in the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. If NXT uh, trounces AEW, then that doesn't help anybody. No. Because you've still got the company that has 90% of the market share gets bigger and stronger. Mm -hmm. And guys that maybe wouldn't get looked at um, get cut out or, or you know, get stuck under one umbrella. AEW succeeding, Ring of Honor, Impact, MLW, NWA, all those guys. Um, I want them all to succeed. Mm -hmm. I don't want the WWE to go away. I don't want NXT to die. I don't want anything negative to happen to anybody. But I think everybody should have their own... Uh, their own little corner of the sandbox. Mm -hmm. and, and now, I, I think the most remarkable thing about na the national wrestling scene is that we exit this decade with six U.S.-based promotions that can contract wrestlers and, and give them some degree of a living wage. Plus a uh, viable option in New Japan. Plus you got New Japan. Plus mm -hmm. you've got Mexico. Mm -hmm. so um, at least two promotions there, uh, AAA and CMLL. Yeah, the, so the international market I I is flourishing. Um, you know, independence, there's more money to be made than ever before through not just merchandising with pro wrestling tees, but the streaming market and just the visibility of everybody and everything is at a height. Mm -hmm. And, um, when I got in the business, you know, there was basically one promotion and one way to make a living. Mm -hmm. And in the context of me, there were zero jobs. There were there were there weren't just zero jobs. There were zero job prospects mm -hmm. because at that point WWE was not hiring wrestling guys to be announcers. Um, TNA had just started, and they had Mike Tanay. Ring of Honor had just started, and they had whoever they had. Um, mm -hmm. So now there's so much, uh, so many greener pastures out there for announcers, for wrestlers, for. Any kind of talent, no matter your job description, it's a healthy, vibrant business right now. And um, I don't believe and hold any stock to people saying we're in a wrestling boom. I, we're not in a wrestling boom. We're not preparing to be in a wrestling boom because ratings have never been lower. Uh, attendance is bad. Um, independents are up. Nationals are down. That basically is what, hmm. it, what it comes down to. We're not in a wrestling boom. When Raw struggles to get over 2 million people, we're not in a wrestling boom. Um, but... More places are healthy. More places are solvent. More places mm. are able to survive, and that's what we need right it's now. It's like it's like a strange leveling off of wrestling, isn't it? Yeah, like it, it's a distribution. It's it's people have it's are, wrestling socialism. <laughs> <laughs> wrestling socialism. Interesting. We will equally distribute the talent. <laughs> But again, there's more places for it. Like I, yeah. I don't know how many conversations are like, oh, all these people are pumping up to NXT or AEW. What do we do next? It's like, well, you look for the next them. Next man up. There's always going to be that. Next right? man up. Yeah. And, and I, I would rather have this like stable um, road rather than have just this roller coaster up and down where the business has these these peaks and valleys and. Everybody always said when I was younger, well, the business is cyclical. That's just what it is. It has its ups, it has its downs, and I don't necessarily know that it needs to. Um, and, I mean, it, if that's the case, we've been in a valley for almost 20 years now. But, mm -hmm. um, again, the business is learning to adapt uh, around that and, and find a way to survive and, and evolve and, and, and pump out what's next. There will always be talent, though. There will always be talent – ready and waiting to, to, to break out and, and, and make the most of it. And there's guys that 
I've just barely seen the national scene now. Like, you know, MLW's got Myron Reed and Pillman mm-hmm. Jr. and guys like mm-hmm. that who are going to be massive stars as soon as the, the, the stars align and they get the right opportunity. Absolutely. Um, we were even looking at it on the local scene, and again, you probably had your finger on the pulse more than I did 10 years ago because I was still shooting video and figuring out what's what. Um, hey, I still am. Uh, <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, I was just having a conversation with Marshall Gambino, Prospect Pro Wrestling, uh, about the amount of talent just coming from regionally. You're mm-hmm. seeing that in Cleveland. You, we're seeing that here in Pittsburgh. We're seeing people coming out of Buffalo, Erie, uh, seeing all these promotions pop up. But it seems like there's plenty of talent to fill in all these plentiful p- uh, uh, Cleveland's probably has about just as many uh, companies popping up as Pittsburgh. Yes, and the answer for both is too many. Um, <laughs> too many people, too many promotions, right? Yeah. I mean, hey, the fewer promotions you have within reason, the more you can weed out the talent that may not belong there. Right, right, but, of course. But you're always going to find guys. Um, but there, there does seem like there's a lot of decent to great talent. Without a doubt. That does fill out across those. Without a doubt. Um I mean, you look at Cleveland, and um, obviously I followed the career of, of Atticus Cobra very closely, mm-hmm. and the fact that he is now popping up in Beyond Wrestling and in GCW, yeah. what, what people are considering the top independents. I was seeing like like what him and, him and Gregor Iron were doing stuff down in like GCW in it, like Tennessee, was yeah. it? him and Greg so, and, and Ricky Shane Page. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, Atticus is 22. Mm-hmm. Let's not lose sight of that. And, he, and he's popping up in the top independents um, in the country right now. And that, that to me, is a big endorsement for him. Um, and, and the sky's the limit for him. He, he's going to have a contract sooner than later. Um, I look at, at guys underneath him in Cleveland like Ashton Day, who is, is an incredible, well-rounded performer. And, and um, apparently decent singer. Um, so he says. Yeah. Uh, his number one hit, Calvin Couture, Pinned Andrew Palace, <laughs> is available on YouTube right now. I don't know if it's available on iTunes. but We can change, um, that. We can change that. I'm sure we could. But uh, uh, Ashton is such a great performer. Um, he doesn't have all the puzzle pieces together yet. Cisco Silver is kind of in the same uh, boat as Ashton uh, mm-hmm. in a much different way as far as how he, he, he presents himself. But um, – you know, once the pieces come together, he could be a commodity anywhere he goes. Um, I'm a really big fan of Trey Lamar. Uh, I've seen mm-hmm. Trey a couple of times. Mm-hmm. I know down uh, in West Virginia at, at Conquest, mm-hmm. we were down there. And uh, Trey will be down there this weekend for an X Division title match, if I'm correct. I believe so. Um, with, yeah, Trey and um, Ace Austin and Facade, I think, which I think I'll be voicing over later because I'm a – prick of a superstar now yeah yeah i got the message like yeah we're losing joe to to ring of honor this weekend <laughs> so sad face but yeah, yeah. No, i i think trey's an incredible talent and i think he's got to put a few more pieces together as far as who and what he is outside of the bell to bell um but but i think he's a, a can't miss prospect um i've become fans of the bitcoin boys um I'm a big fan of Eric because he looks exactly like Tony Mamaluke. And uh, I'm convinced that he is either related to him or actually Tony Mamaluke, who's mastered time travel, um, one or the other. Um, Mikey just looks obnoxious, and I kind of want to slap him, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I know he's also a hard worker, and uh, uh, I think those kids will do good things. And In and, and Pittsburgh... Um, I mean, to me, the the prospect conversation starts with Lee Moriarty. Mm -hmm. Lee is special. Lee has always been special. Um, And he's another he's another can't miss guy. I mean, I I would put Lee and Atticus as one and one a as far as guys in this area who are going, you know, barring anything terrible, you know, personal setback, uh, injury. Um, becoming a monk and moving out of the country, anything like that. Um, I, I could see him doing the monk thing. I would pay the to see I either one about do that. that. I would pay to see either one. But but he still needs to listen to that boot up song. Well, but but I, I, those are the two guys. Those yeah. are the two guys. You know, ten years ago, those two guys 
uh, one from Cleveland, one from Pittsburgh, were Johnny Gargano and DJ Z. Mm-hmm. And you can see now the end of the decade where they've gone. Mm-hmm. I think um, we're both going to be sitting here at the end of 2029, and we'll be very old, and we'll be very sad, and we'll be very bitter. <laughs> but I'm going to put my dentures in long enough to say, Lee and Atticus, I'm proud of those guys. Yeah, not much of a prospect on those teeth, do you? Well, but uh, uh, I, I don't want to single out just Lee because the main event, Gannon and Duke um, down in Florida doing their thing. Um, specimens, uh, great attitudes. Uh, Andrew Palace has been on that cusp for for a while now. Mm-hmm. Um, Man Dime Elijah Dean, I would say he might be the most natural um, young athlete in, in Pittsburgh. Um, the night Man Dime debuted uh, was one of the the proving ground events where all the graduating class has their first match. And I remember one of the trainers came up to me after the night and and asked me, what would you think of all the kids? And I ran down the matches and, um, well, this guy looked good. This guy's got to work on this. This guy needs this. And I finished my little, you know, makeshift scouting report. And then the trainer asked, uh, what about Mandyne? I had forgotten about Mandyne because his match did not feel like a first match. Mm -hmm. His match with Palace just felt like a solid hot opening contest. And he had been around because I remember he was he was seconding like Katie Arquette and Kyle. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. had some he had some some on camera experience. Yeah, but I mean yeah. there, there's no way you can truly be ready for the ring until yeah. you're in there. But it would like at least like in a in a, a fan or watching the product, it yeah. was like, oh hey, he's just in the ring now, but yeah. we've seen him versus but, but, I mean, you know, he, everybody else just he, popped up. He picked it up so naturally. There there were no jitters, mm-hmm. there was no awkwardness, there was no hesitation. Um and, and, you know, he nailed it. Mm-hmm. Um, Katie's another one we can point out. Calvin's another one we can point out. Um, Calvin's done a hell of a job developing himself. Um, you know, and, you know, we're, we're kind of at the next tier as far as, you know, from, from, from the ready-made breakout to, like, here's the guys that are going to take their places when you look at Calvin and uh, R.C. Dupree. And, and, obviously, Argos has had a hell of a year. Um, I hear good things about Zeke Mercer. Um you know, I, I, I hear good things from, you know, a lot of talent down at Rise as well uh, who are doing great things. Um, so, you know, uh, Lewis the Nerd has his cult following. I know that, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, who are some of the other guys at Rise that we should be looking at right now? Uh, Drake Braddock's another good one. Drake Braddock. Mm-hmm. Always, always, he's always on 11. He's always on 11 with his with his uh, uh, personality. It's always, I always get a good moment of the night where he just simply yells straight into the camera. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, no, a lot of really good uh, groups down there. Um, so, it's a lot of opportunity for those guys to flourish. And, yeah. And, and, have and a again, platform. this is the best time in the entire, you know, January will be 17 years for me. This is the best time to enter the wrestling business mm-hmm. in my time in it mm-hmm. um, because of just the jobs and the opportunity and the visibility. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm really going to date myself here, but when I first started, yeah, I was one of the guys who would have to physically mail a VHS tape to a promoter in another state to try to get. And we're talking out. independent promoters. We're not talking yeah. to Ring of Honor. Yeah, I my first interaction with the late great JT Lightning was mailing him a VHS tape in 2005 <laughs> that I had made. You know, and by I made probably made by hooking two VCRs together because that's. Me at the the height of technology is how I did it back then. But now, I, I remember when YouTube first became a thing. I remember guys asking promoters, oh, is it professional to send a YouTube link instead of a package? And, yeah. And yeah. now everybody does. And now we're talking about, like, like uh, organized Dropbox promo folders yeah. to send. And just like, well, yeah, that's smart, you know? Because in 2019, you shouldn't be showing up without your music. <laughs> or at least, like, go here, here it is. Yeah. Like yeah, it. without a doubt. But I mean, yeah, just the way people market themselves and mm-hmm. some of the emails I get or just attachments on social media and just how everything is so well laid out as far as, well, here's my resume and here's my promo photos and here's my matches and here's my interviews and here's my video package, my highlights. Like the ones that get it and actually know what to sell come off looking so organized and professional instead of, you know, just 
again, just kind of slapping a, a cover letter together and, and filling it in with a VHS. But um, self-marketing is more important now than it's ever been with social mm-hmm. media. And I think that also, I feel like that also uh, lends to easy laziness too. Because I've seen some of these messages come through and, and I've heard some other promoters talk about them. It's just like... It, laziness people, and complacency. Yeah. yeah, like it's not like how to present yourself even though yeah. it's so easy to just like pull up the phone and be like hi do you need some wrestlers you know yeah and, and here's the thing it's like there's nothing wrong with what is quickly becoming a cliche where a wrestler will post um looking for 2020 bookings here are the dates i have open in january 1 2 3 4 8 9 12 13 14 <laughs> 15 18 19 20 23 20 you know i get it there's nothing wrong with putting that out there but you can't rely on that. Mm-hmm. Like I've posted a few times like, hey, got a free weekend in three weeks. If you're interested, shoot me a line. That's worked like twice in my life. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you could you, you could get a little bit of a fish on that line. Now, if you're doing well, like I like I like when I've seen Katie in the main event do this and say, mm-hmm. hey, I'm at these promotions these dates and doing those cards yeah. on the other side. I mean, and that can also work in that. Oh, hey, I see you're so you know you look yeah. big. Uh, a promoter could say, "Hey, I see you're open on the 11th. We're doing a show. Can I get you out here?" And, and the other thing too is the guys that, that that put those tweets out there. I'm available on the 11th. If anyone needs me, they have buzz. Mm-hmm. If, if you're still on kind of your 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 primitive years, you got to go out and hustle. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, you're still um, proving yourself at that point, without a doubt. And, well, you never stop proving yourself. You, know, you never stop learning. Yeah, but 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 especially at, at that level. Um, but but there is laziness. There is complacency. There is, uh, you know, yo, I'm trying to get booked and just messages like that. Like, um, you know, or, or just people that'll message like, Hey, let me know when you have any dates. I'd like to work your show. And like, that's a bit presumptive, Mm -hmm. you know, um, people, uh, and I've said this for years. It's, People take for granted how much they have just at, 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 at a, you know, a fingertip with their phone. Because if you took a wrestler from the Jim Cornette era, you know, 80s, 70s, even into the 90s, and you gave him a small machine that could fit in his pocket, that could give him the ability to reach out and contact literally almost everybody in the wrestling business how would that change the game? You know, mm-hmm. um, I was in, I was in Les Thatcher's apartment in Knoxville, Tennessee a couple of months ago because we were doing voiceovers for a project with this film library that will be available soon on indie wrestling.us and pro wrestling library.com. And hashtag cross. Yeah. And, and like the point of the story though, I was looking through all of his like VHS tapes cause I was looking through, some of the stuff that he had that I had not acquired from him yet. And I came across the VHS tape I had sent less in 2005, <laughs> six, seven. It came back like to that. you. I was holding that demo tape in my hand two months ago. And it just crossed my mind like, all right, if he's saving these, why aren't there a hundred of these here? Yeah, you know yeah. why am I, I? I found maybe one or two others that weren't guys that worked under him that were demo tapes. Like why? Les Thatcher, you know, had a hand in training so many guys: Nigel McGuinness and Shark Boy and B.J. Whitmer and, and Pepper Parks and uh, Sammy Callahan. And, and he was former WWF developmental, and he was on MTV and ABC and like all profile all over the place. He's been in the business fifty years, more than that probably now. Um, why am I the only guy reaching out to him? Why aren't there wrestlers looking to beat down the door of a Les Thatcher or a Tom Pritchard or, you know, some of these guys that maybe aren't on the road 300 days anymore and, and might notice you and take a liking to you? Um, take that extra step. Make that connection, you know? Dutch Mantel. What's Dutch Mantel doing, you know? What's wrong with emailing Dutch Mantel and saying, can you watch my stuff? Is he with Impact now? Not at this Not point. Not lately, I no. I don't think. Yeah. Unless something happened I don't know about. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like, there, there's so many guys at the job of hat, like, are just wrestlers. Like, mm-hmm. find, find you know, Tim Horner. Find somebody that, like, is out there and not doing a lot. And mm-hmm. 
pick their brain. What's the worst that could happen? They don't answer. They give you advice that, that you don't want to take. Like, Even on the local level, because I, I, mm-hmm. I, there's a lot of it seems to be a struggle with some of these shows, you know, locally for us, you're 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 uh, Jake Garrett's and Shirley Doe's mm-hmm. and and Super Hentai's. You mm-hmm. know, if it's on the show, it's like Brandon K. Like yeah, Brandon K. Yeah, absolutely. It's just like ask these guys questions. Paul Atlas, another one. Yeah. Um, you know, like these guys have the, like they actually some of them have been on some WWE, ECW. Uh, now I think about it, but they've been around. You yeah. know, they know what they're doing. And, and like, you know, even if you want to say, um, oh, well, my goals are higher than Pittsburgh wrestling. Well, guess what? I watched Shirley Doe kick ass with Balls Mahoney, mm-hmm. with Sandman, um, mm-hmm. Steve Carino, Tracy Smothers, um, Mick Foley. The list goes on. Mm-hmm. So, you uh, know. Brandon Kay's a guy that's been on uh, Sunday Night Heat and uh, Shock on Saturday Night or something. Yeah. You Brandon, know, or, I watched. Impact Wrestling. Brandon, I watched do dark matches. Paul Atlas, I watched do dark matches, mm-hmm. you know. Um, Bubba the Bulldog, I watched do dark matches, mm-hmm. you know. I, 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 if nothing else, I would be talking to Brandon and Paul and Bubba as far as, you know, what's it like backstage? How do the guys carry themselves? Mm -hmm. Uh, Where do the cameras go? Yeah. You know, um, what do the runners do? Like, what's the feedback like? What are they looking for? Like, there's so many questions. A lot of it's changed in 20 years, but a lot of it hasn't. Yeah. A good idea, you know. So I want to I want to touch on a little bit of um, uh, looking at what it was going on in the grand wrestling world in 2010. Yes. Again, kind of see how much has changed in that decade long uh, uh, thing. Again, I, I pulled up I pulled up some stuff for the three companies. Like, let's say top three companies running at the time, which WWE, TNA, and Ring of Honor. Correct. Uh, doing some great stuff. Uh, so let's start with Ring of Honor, since of course you're affiliated with them then and currently <laughs> so yes. it seems to make sense i am the cockroach of ring of honor you, i will never leave i'm looking at do you by chance know what the the final battle 2010 main event might have been 2010 or 2009 20, i'm looking at 2010 you're looking at 2010 mm-hmm. well that is not a full decade ago well, i'm looking cheating. at when we started the decade final battle 2010 i know they did I don't know if it was the main event, but that was the that was the climax of Steen and Generico, right? Yeah, it was the main event. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not the latter war that I think some people may uh, think of, but it was the unsanctioned fight without honor for uh, it was Mask versus Steen leaving Ring of Honor. And Steen left, right? I believe Steen left. Yeah. And Steen got very upset, and mm-hmm. him and Jim Cornette had a thing. Mm-hmm. I remember but I those days? Gone. Those were fun. Uh, opening the match or opening the night. Was the All Night Express, Kenny King and Red Titus, um, against somebody named Adam Cole and, Bye bye. and Kyle O'Reilly. Future Shock. Mm-hmm. And uh, going full circle, uh, Cole and O'Reilly still a team, mm-hmm. present day in NXT, and Red Titus will be uh, wrestling Kenny King tomorrow night at Final Oh, Battle. wow. Yep. Jeez, 10 years later, nine years later, I guess. Eddie Edwards and Sanjay Dutt in a match. Ah, I love Sanjay. Sanjay's great. Cole Cabana and TJ Perkins. I love both of those guys. Mm-hmm. TJ Perkins doesn't age, by the way. He looks exactly, well, not exactly the same. But yeah, looks- I'm kind of shocked to see he's on Ring of Honor in 2010, considering, like, I feel, like, you watch him and just like, is this guy 25 or something? Yeah, when he when he posted uh, like a couple of years ago that it was like his thirty fourth birthday or something, I got yeah. pissed at him. You know, <laughs> I, I don't even know how old he is now. He's you know mid thirties, but they, something about those Filipino jeans, man. Mm-hmm. Him, him, mm-hmm. and DJ Z are two of the prettiest men I've ever seen in my life, without a doubt. Absolutely, uh, homicide. Who I think just announced his, his kind of farewell. Like I think he's retiring, if I'm not mistaken. I thought I saw something the other day on Twitter about it. Could be. I mean, Homicide's been kind He's of been in and out for a, for, bit. for a while. Yeah, he, he was taking on Christopher Daniels. Of course, doing great things already at AEW, part of SoCal U. Without a doubt. So, uh, let's see. Sarah Del Rey, who now, of course, training up there at the Performance Center WWE. Absolutely. And Serena Deeb. I Serena. believe this was post-CM Punk or pre. Maybe pre. I want to say post, but I'm not sure about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, neither. Uh, defeated Amazing Kong, not awesome yet, and Daisy Hayes. There's an old name I remember. Amazing Kong had finished being awesome. 
Hmm? That was after uh, Kong's TNA run. Oh, that's post awesome. That's post awesome or midnight awesome. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. So I don't know. I don't know if um, if TNA had an IP on that or what, but uh, but yeah, she. I remember voicing her. I had to call her Amazing Kong. That's when she was here for a Pittsburgh show, right? Uh, and in Ring of Honor. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, Pittsburgh. I could. Pittsburgh's under the radar. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. sure whatever she was advertised at, I, I called her. But. I remember trying to figure out what we're calling Chelsea Green tonight. Right. But. Yeah. I, I went with Laurel because she was in the company at the time. But mm-hmm. um, also weird for me, 10 years ago, voicing the Young Bucks, I had to call them Generation Me. Mm. Max and Jeremy Buck. Max and Jeremy was their name. Yes. Matt wow. was Max and Nick was Jeremy. And I remember um, me and Prazak in the the voiceover room, um, and I think Dave was aggravated that he had to call them Generation Me, and you know, why do we even have to ask? We should have just called them the Bucks. And I'm just rolling with the punches. I'm just happy to be there. You know, um, we should point out too that that more things change, the more they stay the same. Because uh, at the beginning of the decade, we thought we were going to have a new Monday Night War. Mm-hmm. Is that on your notes? Uh, that, well, I have I have pulled up Bound for Glory from that year. I figure okay. that's their their WrestleMania of the year for that PNA. was when, that was ten ten ten. That was ten ten ten. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. October tenth, twenty ten. I dialed and saved them my long distance. That is a <laughs> dated I, joke. I, if I, anybody, yeah, it's another that. decade back with like yes. Alf and stuff, right? But but on on I think it was January fourth, two thousand ten, is when Impact went head to head with Raw, mm-hmm. and Hogan debuted, and it didn't go well. Yeah, that that was that was gone way before ten ten ten. So I figured I'd throw that out there now. And first match on that Bound for Glory is the Motor Machine, the Motor City Machine Guns, uh, Shelly and Saban against Generation Me. Generation Me, Young Bucks. Did we finish the Ring of Honor card. I don't want to jump ahead. Uh, dude, that was that was the high points. Okay, that, that was the high points. Um, I think that gives a good idea of what was happening to Ring of Honor yeah, at the time. And I, I think um, Machine Guns and Generation Me brought out the best out of each other for sure. That was a great series. Um, I don't know what it is about Alex Shelley, who's just like a, a, a magic pixie dust formula. But now, any, yeah. anytime he's in, in a team, whether it's Kushida or Saban or anybody, just just magic. Uh, also, uh, Lee Moriarty uh, in, in in the midst of a series with him having yeah. his rematch at the end of the month. I, and like the, the the older I get, the more I appreciate Shelley, mm-hmm. um, and just how smooth he is. I'm looking forward to uh, uh, you know Final Battle Weekend. What match I'm looking forward to more than anything is Shelley versus Jonathan Gresham, who are two of my absolute favorite guys to watch. I know they've wrestled before. Mm-hmm. Um, so Gresham again in Pittsburgh, and he was it was a two out of three falls match, and still just like not the way I thought a two out of three falls match was going to go. Hell, when Gresham's one fall, it can have the length of two out of three falls. That is he true. Just, he captivates you. Like, Listen, what I'm sitting there is like we like I remember filming a 45 minute finals of a tournament. Yeah, uh, match with Gresham. They say, oh, it's going to be two out of three falls, and we're like, oh my god, how long is this match going to be? Gresham, to me, Gresham's matches. It's just it's like it's like a chess game, not just for for the guys in it, but for me because it's like. I have to think two moves ahead, and I have to think like every little body movement. What, what? I, I just really try to get inside their heads, mm-hmm. and um, just at, one of my absolute favorite people to watch is Gresham and uh, um, Shelley too. I mean, different paths, but cut from the same cloth. Looking at this Bound for Glory, just to kind of keep an eye, on, uh, you know, an idea was going again. Hogan was there. I, I'm seeing Hogan and and uh, Angle and Sting all over this thing. Uh, we had we're in the midst of yet another ECW reunion. EV two, EV two point with uh, Raven, Rhino, Sabu, Stevie Richards, Tommy Dreamer, Mick Foley hanging out in a lethal lockdown match. So it's a war games type match uh, against Fortune. And we've been reminiscing. I, I did not watch dedicatedly when Fortune was a thing, but looking back, fond memories of Fortune: AJ Styles, James Storm, Kazarian. Matt Morgan and Bobby Roode with Ric Flair, of course. So it was, it was kind of like a new horseman for TNA. Kind of, except for at times there were five to six people in a group called Fortune. But that aside, mm-hmm. um, no, I, I think um, 
I mean, the level of talent speaks for itself there um, with AJ and Bobby Roode and Storm and Kazarian. And uh, they look the part. And I, I, I think one of, of, of many problems that TNA had would be casting their homegrown stars as, as second-rate versions of the quote-unquote real stars. Mm-hmm. You need the knockoff horsemen. Uh, they try to make AJ the knockoff Flair. You've got the knockoff Scott Stein. You've got the knockoff Stone Cold. You've got you know a number of examples where— There was a lot of this work before. Let's do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and case in point with EV2. And, mm-hmm. you know, let's do our own ECW reunion. Let's do our own. The main event of this show is them trying to do, you know, Hogan's turn again. I it, Was it? So it was uh, uh, Hardy, Jeff Hardy, uh, Kurt Angle, and Mr. Anderson? Yeah. That was Jeff Hardy's heel turn where they, okay. they formed Immortal with oh. Bischoff and Hogan and Abyss. And that was the whole. Climax of the whole 10 10 10 story. Oh, and, and that... Angle retired since he lost this match. Oh, that. In 2010. Hmm. Fast forward a decade. It feels like he just retired. What a hmm. quick 10 years it's been. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I think I, I was always such a big, and we talk about supporting AEW. I was always such a big supporter of TNA. Still am. I, yeah, I, I yeah. have a lot of friends there, you know. Um, Definitely, it feels like they're. It definitely feels like they've had a bit of a a, a reboot and refresh with this uh, access. Hundred percent. It's it's doing 100%. great things and they're pushing an envelope in new ways for sure and uh, uh, doing really cool. So WWE, uh, what do you think? I got a top twenty five matches of twenty ten. Okay. And uh, uh, up 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 at the very top is, and I I need to confirm whether this is the first or second one here. But uh, they when uh, Undertaker was a mere eighteen and zero, ah, such a young kid. Ah, yes, and uh, he was uh, having at least one of his battles with Shawn Michaels. I would assume I that would be this is this is a retirement match. It looks like could have been. So so that would have been the second match. Yeah, it would have been the second match. Okay, so we're in two thousand ten. I guess that checks out math wise. I don't mm-hmm. know. Um, yeah, no surprise there. I mean, two of the best of all time and incredible chemistry. I, anytime Sean and Taker have gotten in the ring, even back in the nineties with Hell in a Cell, um, I don't think Hell in a Cell would have been the marketing juggernaut that it was for WWF if you didn't have Sean and Taker in that thing to to truly make that match. The you know that they made that match more so than the match making them. See, we're looking at some of our top matches. We had some uh, Rey Mysterio and CM Punk happening. Uh, we had a Elimination Chamber with, check out this lineup. Uh, the Undertaker was the World Heavyweight Champion. Jericho, John Morrison, who just re-signed with <laughs> WWE. Interesting. Um, I wonder if it'll be Johnny SmackDown or Johnny Raw, or we're just going to skip all that. Uh, <laughs> R-Truth, CM Punk, and Rey Mysterio. I really worked out for our truth. I mean, how many times has he been for seven champion? Hey, he's he's got longevity. Yeah, he's got a job. Him. Good for him. He's held more championship runs than everybody else in that match combined by this point. Mm-hmm. We were uh, we were introduced to the Nexus. We were. That means this is the year that we saw Daniel Bryan get fired and get fired, and then choke uh, Justin Roberts with his tie. Hang out at Chikara and AIW that weekend. <laughs> How did how did AEW not do that when they beat up Justin Roberts two weeks ago? Yeah, I was waiting yeah. for Jericho and Guevara to pull off his tie and choke him. Mm-hmm. I, I thought for sure that would happen, but um, no, that was that was good TV for a little bit. Uh, the Nexus uh, deal and you know how unexpected that was. I don't know that I don't know if they had the, the the chops in the ring to really carry it beneath. Barrett and, and Brian, and with Brian gone, you know, you're kind of filling a void from there. Um, another another uh, uh, nice pair up I'd love to see again. Uh, Evan Bourne, Matt Seidel. Yes. Against Chris Jericho. Two guys that can still go today. Mm-hmm. I believe Seidel will actually be here in Pittsburgh in February for WrestleRex. As part of WrestleRex, yeah. Yeah. I can't wait till Evan Bourne meets Dan Housen. Oh, jeez. That'll be a great conversation. Oh man! Um, let's see. Seidel explaining how to open Danhausen's third Eyehausen. 
That will be good stuff. I will be illegally filming in the locker room. <laughs> Nothing weird about that. Daniel O'Brien and Chris Jericho, a young, uh, clean-shaven Daniel O'Brien. Was that their, their NXT match when NXT was just like Double Dare instead it of an actual It looks like I've seen some NXT in the background of this. This is all um, – definitely this article was not formatted for the current WWE.com. <laughs> so the pictures are kind of all over the place and weirdly – maybe if I turn my iPad this way, it'll work. No, nope, that's I, worse. I, that's definitely worse. I really like the pre-developmental NXT when Michael Cole just gave up and just buried the whole product. Oh, and he had a gong. He had a and gong, everything? Oh. and he had a sign that said "Stop the pain." Yeah, and he would just knock everybody, and then Josh Matthews would just be snickering under his breath the whole time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dolph Ziggler was doing stuff. He was a lot blonder than he is now. Oh, I just lost my place in this stupid article. <laughs> was that when he was the champion, or was that the next year? Uh, which one, Dolph? No, that was a few years later. Yeah, it was a few years later. That was like that was like 2013, right? There's some Jericho Gold Dust going on. There's some uh, Rey Mysterio Undertaker going on. You se- you seem Royal so Rumble. confused and uncomfortable by whatever's happening. What? You seem so confused and uncomfortable. <laughs> this article by makes happening. me so mad. <laughs> the formatting so bad. Uh, let's see. ECW is still happening. A version of it. Was it? Christian was fighting for the championship. I think was the champion in this. Oh, that that must have been um, against Ezekiel Jackson. That must have been right in the beginning of 2010, then, because that that, mm-hmm. that got bumped for NXT. Jeez, big Zeke. I love that Zeke's entrance music was the brawl for all slash XFL theme with lyrics. <laughs> uh, it's been a hell of a uh, decade here, and uh, man, what did we learn from the 2010s? What did we not learn from the 2010s? I learned a lot of what to do and what not to do. Um, I think we all personally learned a lot from that. What, what I learned more than anything is that this business is constantly evolving faster than ever, and you need to keep your, your finger on the pulse or mm-hmm. it's going to pass you by. Mm-hmm. And absolutely never say never. No. No. That's – that. that it, from from the big WWE to the Indies, mm-hmm. it seems like it comes around in a lot of cases. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what the next decade goes on here. I hope I make it through another I hope decade. you make it through. <laughs> what if you play this as like a retro piece 10 years from now and I'm already dead? This now is, this now, now the, it's going to feel really weird. This is going to be the remembering um, Joe Dombrowski episode. Aww. We'll have a lot of clips from this. Joe, I have no transition. <laughs> We're going to end on a somber note? I don't See, know. What do, what do I do with that? I have to stay alive long enough so I can watch uh, Lee Moriarty and Atticus Coger. There you go. Have their big pay-per-view match. Have their big pay-per-view match. Ten years from now. Survivor Series 2026. Yeah. N- neither of them know, but I'm going to get cut in for 10% of their contracts. Mm-hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just agent the shit out of those guys. <laughs> Awesome. Joe Dombrowski, you got stuff. It's online. Stuff and things at joe-dombrowski.com and prowrestlinglibrary.com. DVDs, MP4s, digital files, and such. Um, we are in the process of releasing the best of Premier Championship Wrestling year number, Trace. Literally, right now as we're recording. Literally, Which means yeah. it's probably out by the time it's you listen right to right over there. Yeah. Um, featuring all kinds of... Uh, of uh, uh, um, Name value stars, I guess would be the best way to put it, from Trey Miguel to Myron Reed to Ricky Shane Page, Gregory Iron, uh, Dylan Bostic, J-Rock Daddy, The Culmination, The Main Event, Lee Moriarty, um, and, and so many more. Zoe Sky, uh, and even a wrestler by the name of Nick Lendl. What? what? Yes, his run is on there. Uh, we see the return to Cleveland of Wardlow. We see Ashton Day's debut performance. And Calvin Couture has his face up somebody's butt. All that and a whole lot more in the best of premiere. Year number three. Um, and we are uh, we got a few more releases coming out before WrestleMania, so stay posted to that. We have uh, about 300 hours on Pro Wrestling Library now and Woo. continuing to grow. Um, I'm on the book face, the tweeter, the Yin's tube. And the Instagrams as well. You can just search for my name and I gotta keep up with find you. me. I gotta keep both of you on those hours, right? Yeah, now it's, like, now it's a competition. I'm like, oh it man, is. we're gonna be like NXT and AEW this week, where they tied in the ratings. We tied. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Mm, that has never happened in all of the decades. No, the average no. attendance or the average uh, viewership, excuse me, 
has tied. And I, I followed Ron Nitro for all six years, and mm-hmm. I never saw that happen. But it happened. Mm-hmm. Again, never say never. It's Absolutely. Wild. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody. Again, if you're catching this on the podcast stream, uh, I hope you guys are enjoying your holiday. I hope we help you get your, get through your holiday, if that's a concern. Uh, and, of course, we'll see you guys in 2020 for Full On Wrestling Mayhem Show and a lot of other great things going on in the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Uh, we'll see you there. We'll see you then. Have happy holidays. And Mary, whatever you're doing. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.